Welcome to Gonzaga Nation SI. A quick update on the Gonzaga front. There's been a lot of curiosity about what is going on with Gonzaga men's basketball because currently five players have declared for the NBA draft. Two of them are for certain gone being Andrew Nemhart, who declared for a third time so he does not have the ability to come back. Chet Holmgren who we all knew when he decided to go to Gonzaga was probably one and done. He has made that decision. Drew Timmy is a early entry candidate as is Julian Strother and then Roger Bolton at the last minute put his name into the early entry candidate although he could come back because of having one year of eligibility left due due to the COVID year granted to student athletes not quite sure where he stands uh, I would imagine Strother is back, but he's trying to get some NBA feedback. Uh, and then the jury is still out on Drew Timmy, although there are positive reasons for him to come back due to the NIL opportunities that are out there. But then there's also, um, you know, the thought that he has accomplished as much or more um, than any Gonzaga player in recent memory. So what would the point of of coming back B we'll have to see he's got a couple more weeks before that decision will be made final whether he is coming back or staying in the draft haven't seen or heard any updates in to make me think one or the other but people getting a little antsy in Gonzaga basketball circles about because those five guys are in the draft because Gonzaga has been fairly quiet in regards to the transfer portal um, with guys not entering it, which quite frankly is a, a I don't want to say it's a shocker, but it, Gonzaga was one of the very few teams across the college basketball landscape that doesn't have a scholarship player that has entered the transfer portal. Will Graves, a walk-on, has uh, as he's going to look for another opportunity to play at a lower level uh, like a D2 um, to play his final year of eligibility. But Gonzaga uh, has not had anybody enter the transfer portal, which is great. One of the things that we've seen in the transfer portal, unfortunately, is guys going in so that they could negotiate an NIL deal and then going right back to the same school. Um, it's made this kind of uh, early off season very interesting for college basketball. But Big news in Gonzaga circles yesterday, Sunday, May 1st, in that they've got commitments from two players, one out of the transfer portal, and then one, one of their top targets uh, from high school. We'll start with uh, the high school commit, Dusty Strummer, a 6'6 shooting guard from the Los Angeles area, class of 2023 so he will be a senior next year uh he's been recruited by gonzaga for quite some time he's been he narrowed his list um a short bit ago to have gonzaga included with schools like houston arizona ucla uh but he made the commitment made the announcement he wants to be a zag um so congratulations to him congratulations to coach few and the staff for uh, bringing this young man into the program. Um, when you look at him and you're kind of curious, what, what do you, what do we, what does Gonzaga get out of a player in Dusty Stromer? Well, um, six, six shooting guard, he can shoot it. Um, there's going to be lots of comparisons, uh, to Corey Kispert. There may be some comparisons to Richie Fromm. Um, there may be some comparisons to Micah Downs because of the ability to shoot it and the size. Um, but when, when I watch highlights and, and I see him in play in different situations, um, he can absolutely shoot it. Uh, he, can, he can find openings um, coming off of screens and in space to really be able to uh, f- shoot it at a high level. He's got tremendous footwork in preparation of getting himself ready. Uh, there's some highlights, some clips that I've seen where maybe he's a little bit off balance, but uh, he's balanced up top um, with his shooting mechanics with his upper body that can allow you uh, to overcome that at times. But that's one thing that's become a constant with great Gonzaga shooters is their footwork. So uh, with more time, more effort, more reps with Gonzaga's player development um, workouts, 
I would imagine him becoming an absolute knockdown shooter because of uh, you know his his mechanics up top, but also the improvement of his mechanics with his footwork. But the other thing that I see when I look at him is uh, he's got a good ability to attack you off the dribble. And I know I had mentioned Corey Kispert and I had mentioned uh, Richie Fromm a little bit, Micah Downs a little bit uh, as comparisons. Um, And one of the things with Kispert is he came in as, you know, really a catch and shoot guy, maybe come off of screens occasionally, but he wasn't going to put the ball on the deck. He wasn't going to be asked to put the ball on the deck, but he became a guy that coach few and staff was really comfortable putting the ball in his hands in pick and roll situations. He could really do a, a great job of, of getting downhill defense uh, w- with the bounce in really attacking the defense. So I think that's something that um, Stromer may have a slight advantage uh, from those guys that I mentioned and that he can do that a little bit more at this stage of his career than those other guys could. Um, but I think the other thing that, that makes you excited about him is with Gonzaga having an offense that is so predicated on, on multiple ball handlers, multiple decision makers, uh, and that continuity ball screen offense that they run a lot is if you can have your wings have size and shoot it, but then also make plays and put the ball on the deck, uh, your offense becomes even much more versatile. So that's going to be interesting to see, um, the one thing is uh, he has really played well on the Nike EYBL circuit, and he's become a priority target for Gonzaga. Um, so he's played with a lot of eyes, a lot of attention on him, and it'll be uh, great to get him on campus for Gonzaga fans. Uh, but welcome to the Gonzaga basketball community, Dusty Stromer. Second commitment, and it was actually the first commitment yesterday um, for Gonzaga, um, in this somewhat quiet off season, but also in the transfer portal, uh, Gonzaga has been linked to many guys in the transfer portal, um, this spring. And that's going to be the case because with almost 15, 1600 players in that portal, uh, Gonzaga having to replace many players, um, you're going to have to be active, but you're going to have to be, you got to be active enough to, to get on the player's radar and, and make them envision what could be. But then you've also got to, to be patient enough to not offer the guys that don't fit just right. And so I think that's one thing you've got to give Gonzaga a ton of credit for over the past few years with that transfer portal and grad transfers is being selective with who they really put their focus and attention on. And it might not always be the players that the fans would want to see or the boosters or the alumni I think they need, but the the staff always does a tremendous job of finding the right guys. They did it with Geno Crandall, Ryan Woolridge, uh, Byron Wesley. Um, they did it this past off season with Roger Bolton. And this year uh, I expect a similar um transfer to just kind of get into the mix easily and and almost seamlessly and that's Efton Reed uh he is transferring to Gonzaga from LSU uh the fact that he transferred from LSU is not a surprise one of 13 players that have left the LSU program after Will Wade was fired and Will Wade um, is a complete opposite of coach few in regards to recruiting. And, and, you know, he's caught on some of those FBI wiretaps of, um, uh, willing to pay players, making a strong offer. Uh, and it's, it was a surprise that he kept his job as long as he did and not saying he's not a great basketball coach. I think he is a really good basketball coach. I think it's just, you know, with the, the, the extracurriculars that were going on around him and the LSU program, um, their president and their AD had no choice but to make a make a change. And with that change, as I mentioned, all 13 of the scholarship players at LSU have left, Efton Reed uh, being one of them. He was a five-star recruit coming out of Richmond, Virginia. Now he's class of 2021, so he's only a freshman. And you look at other five-star recruits as bigs in that class, well, guess who they were? They were Chet Holmgren. They were Paulo Bancaro. They were Jabari Smith. Um, He was expected, Efton Reed was expected, to have a big impact 
at LSU as a freshman, and he did have an impact. Uh, you know, he scored a little over six points, a little over four rebounds a game, played not quite 20 minutes per game. Um, but as the season went on in Baton Rouge, um, guys like Tari Eason really kind of jumped to the forefront um, and kind of be the fo- became the focal point of that offense and, and really um, – I don't want to say took advantage, but, you know, were the aggressors in, in making, taking advantage of their opportunities. Well, while Efton Reed did have a nice freshman year, um, I think his upside is is something that in the right setting is is tremendous. I think when you look at him, he's a, a very skilled big man, right around seven feet. Um, he's not a crazy athlete. Um, that maybe you would think would be coming out of the SEC. Um, But he's a good enough athlete, and he's got tremendous length. And with that tremendous length, um, you know, you also talk about the skill set factor. If if you've grown up not being as athletic as others, you have to develop the skill set. And so he's got a nice fundamental base of of a skill set, being able to shoot it a little bit out to three. He doesn't have the you know, the prolific three point shooting of a Chet Holmgren, but, um, he will space the defense and and you have to honor him out there to a certain extent, more of a pick and pop to 15 feet, more of a pick and dive can score around the bucket with either hand, more of a mid post player, but very skilled, very good length. I think you're going to see somebody that that's going to fit very easily. Um, somebody who was a five-star recruit in that 2021 class that didn't quite um, make a splash the way that maybe he had expected or wanted to or, um, quite frankly, expected to down in LSU. But with all players leaving LSU, uh, that creates an opportunity for Efton Reed to go to Gonzaga. So I think it's a great day for Gonzaga when you look at the two commitments that they picked up Efton Reed from LSU in the transfer portal who will be eligible this upcoming season then Dusty Stromer uh, out of the LA area a 6'6 shooting guard so good day for the Gonzaga Bulldogs on the recruiting trail for Gonzaga Nation SI and the Gonzaga Nation Media Network I'm your host Dan Dickow